I'd like to think of it as two journeys, right? What's our, what's our ultimate goal for a student? And I think that, um, like for me, that ultimate goal is that they're a full-time staff member. I guess actually the, the ultimate goal is they want to run the school for me. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that really starts, um, at that in, at enrollment, right? So there's a specific path. They got to get to gold belt and they got to get to the black belt club or however you do it. Then they got to get the assistant instructor training, instructor training. They got to get all the way there. Um, that if you kind of think of how many people start at white belt versus end up as a full-time staff member, that's a pretty huge, uh, you know, it's a pretty huge funnel. And there's not a lot of white belts that are going to end up being a staff member. And you can, and if that's kind of uh, out of your thinking, you can just think of it as uh, how many white belts make it to black belt. That's kind of an easier way to think of it. How many white belts make it to black belt? You probably got 10 white belts on your floor right now. Then we know they're not all going to make it to black belt. And each point along the way, you have to kind of plug the holes, right? Um, so like if a white belt has a ho-hum enrollment experience and they don't know how to tie their belt and mom isn't even sure if they're allowed to come to class if they don't have their belt and they end up turning around on their, what's supposed to be their second class, they go home and try to get the belt. And then, you know what I mean? So like there's all kinds of places that it can break down. They have a bad experience at green belt because you say they have to break a board and everybody's scared or whatever. Um, the same thing can happen on the journey from, uh, getting from wherever a person is, a prospect is getting to your website. So, um, if you have the wrong messaging at, uh, if your messaging at white belt is we're going to turn you into the next UFC fighter. If that's your messaging for your school, because you, your goal is not to make long time students is to make UFC fighters, then good. But that your messaging may be off a little bit, right? So if your messaging is off in your Facebook ad, then that's going to affect your clicks a lot. Uh, additionally, um, you may have a Facebook ad that gets clicks, but it's not high quality clicks. Um, they're not people who are likely to sign up. Um, and honestly, I think it's a lot simpler and it's a lot more linear. Once you have somebody at white belt getting them to black belt, that's linear, meaning like there's only one direction they can go once they're in that. Um, now, a lot of different things can affect them. But with advertising, getting traffic to your website, um, specifically with Facebook, Facebook's really helped marketers kind of uh, understand even more demographic behaviors because Facebook will ask you, what's your objective for this ad? Is anybody running a Facebook ad right now? Okay. What's your objective? What, did you, do you guys know what the objective is that you've chosen? The objective is to get them to, to do a trial. Right, right. No, I don't mean join. your objective. I mean, Facebook says uh, on the, and the campaign level is an objective. And then on the ad set level is demographics. And on the ad level is what your creative, your picture, your. I would do traffic. I would always do traffic. Okay. So that's a good example. So like traffic, the traffic objective is, and this is going to be, this is crazy. If you don't understand this. The traffic objective is going to get people uh, who are more likely to visit your website. The objective, Facebook, uh, I was talking to a Facebook ad rep a few weeks ago, and he said Facebook data tracks something like 50,000 metrics per user, which is nuts, right? And, uh, and I was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. And he was, he was trying to convince me to use some, like a lookalike audience, which doesn't work on uh, audiences of less than a million. Look, if, you're, if you've, you've ever heard use a lookalike audience, it really doesn't work uh, on a local stage. Um, but uh, if Facebook's tracking 50,000 metrics per person, what are some of those metrics? Inevitably, some of those metrics are, Greg really likes to watch videos a lot, but he's very unlikely to click on them, to click on, on something. Or Dave uh, is very likely to scroll right past the video but he's likely to click on it. However, Sal is likely to click on the video and has a history of actually making purchases or taking actions on the website from, from Facebook from which he clicked. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like when you say traffic objective, Facebook's going to do as much as it can 
to get you the prettiest metrics possible, which is fine. I definitely think you should do traffic as opposed to engagement. Or for example, engagement is an objective. So you can, Facebook is, is, is likely to say, William uh, comments on a lot of things and likes a lot of things and reacts to a lot of things and shares a lot of things. So like if Dave chose engagement for the objective, it's, it, uh, Facebook is likely to try to avoid Greg, avoid Sal, and get to me, if that makes sense, okay? So that it starts literally just with the objective. What's your objective? And if your objective is to get traffic, you might get a lot of clicks, but not necessarily people who are likely to take action. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad prospect because hopefully your targeting is such that it's a mom, it should always be a mom if it's a kid's martial arts program, who lives within X amount of miles to your school. And I don't like to give numbers of miles because um, your place can be different than mine, right? Like I, I originally started in Stillwater, Oklahoma. People would travel 20 miles away just to go to the grocery store. So it doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's only got to be a one mile radius. But if it, you're in the Bronx, you probably even want to target by neighborhood, not necessarily, you know what I mean? So X number of miles away, whatever's appropriate for you, um, who is who Facebook knows is a, is a, is a mom, right? Um, and who is not over, say, 50 years old or over, say, 47 years old and is not under, say, 27 or 28 years old. So, like, we know the demographics should be right for that person. So then once they get on your website, we want to make sure that there are some things that, that, that we can do, like pixel our website so that we can advertise to them again or – give them some option that is not signing their life away from martial arts. I hear it so often from karate people. They're just not like my website's not working. You know, I used to have a lot of website clients. And so I would hear from like, I tell you this, I used to get website clients and all website uh, uh, operator people who, who run websites. know you guys are bouncers. You bounce from company to company to company, trying to find who's going to get them the, the best results. But nobody really understands what the results are they want. They, they want, I sign up with company X and 100 new students come through the door. Well, it doesn't necessarily work like that. So you might, uh, you, you know, if we know the lifetime value of a client, we should be happy with three new people from a website every, every month, three new members, because that should be five grand in your pocket every time that member comes in, you know. Um, but your, your, like your results are based on your own objectives. And we have, to, we have to say if the only result that we're expecting from a website is a new paid trial or a new enrollment, we might be barking up the wrong tree. Maybe the result should be um, liking our Facebook page or maybe the result should be opting in for more information uh, or the result should be giving our phone number to talk to a person um, as opposed to just signing up for a membership right then and there does anybody have what, what does anybody know what their results are like what results you're expecting from your website like dave what are, what are you trying on your website if somebody visits dave's website what's the goal what are they trying to do i like to have them opt in okay and ideally go to the front you know go to the landing page select the program purchase the trial schedule their lesson okay so is purchase a trial the only thing that they can do give me, give me a second sorry hang on guys motion tulsa this is william how can i help you sure can i get your number and call you right back My name is William. What was your name? Perfect, Ashley. Thanks so much. I'll call you in just a minute. Bye-bye. Our, uh, our manager is out for tonsil, the tonsillectomy. Oh. I'm like, oh, God, I got to answer the phones because Julia's not in yet and the manager's not here. So uh, sorry, you guys had to, had to, sorry, had to watch me do that. But so what do you do if they don't purchase a trial, Dave? Uh, sit there and go like this, like – I don't know, you know. <laughs> Does that opt-in go into your uh, Rainmaker? Yeah, I'll get the text if it's all working. And okay. it goes in, you know, but that's what we're struggling with. It's like, <clears throat> why are they not, you know, what's the hang-up here? We're getting this far. 
they're getting to the landing page, but they're not, you know, paint, whether it was free or $10 or $9 or $29, they're not opting to buy that trial. I got good news and bad news. Uh, and a caveat, and the caveat is there's always an exception to the rule right? There's always somebody that will raise their hand and say, William's full of crap. I get everybody that ever comes to my website buys a hundred dollar trial right off the bat. Someone has that experience. 99% of us have, feel the same way that Greg or that Dave does, right? So like, it's just how it goes. That's that. The good news is you're not alone. The bad news is you just have, it, it's hard. It's hard work and you have to tweak and test. Um, people, uh, people need to be on your email list. And they need to be getting, not all the time, but regular content that is not consistently an offer. Um, I, I said the other day, I mentioned a guy named Frank Kern. And I say, he said, uh, here's what I have. Here's what it'll do for you. Here's what I want you to do next, right? The other thing that I learned from Frank Kern, and this is all over the place now, but um, he said, I give 75% cool stuff and 25% pitch. Now, he's changed that a little bit. Uh, if you watch some of his new stuff, he gives a pitch in almost every uh, thing, but it's real subtle. It's real like, if you like this, hey, go over here, right? But it's all, but now he's giving 100% content and like 1% pitch in each piece of content. So do you have things that you can send them? Can you invite them to a P&O every month? Can you let them know that we have a, a, a cookout and you're invited? Can you let them know that we're offering a free service where, where we'll come and, and um, interact with their PTA and, and, and do a, you know what I mean? Like there needs to be things that you invite them to all the time or some kind of pre-done email uh, drip from your automation, from your flows that goes out to them, say, every 15 days just to remind them that you're here. People stay on email lists on purpose because they want, because they, they like you, but they're just not in the position right now to do it. And sometimes they're not in the position for years. I've said this before, probably on, the, on these meetings, I've had people who have been on our email list for their first kid and didn't have time to come in, didn't make it happen, whatever. And then I see their, a different name come through for a trial. And it's like, wait, what's this? Well, we never could get our first kid in there, so we're bringing our second kid in. You know, you just have to be patient. If you're playing the short game, it's not gonna work. You have to play the long game, you know? Is it, is, is anybody else have the same experience Dave does? Like you get plenty of traffic on your website, it's just not converting to trials? Or is somebody converting to trials nonstop? Um, no, I get 100% of them that come in all the time, every time. It's a perfect world I live in. I don't know what, what world look, you live in, Dave. Look how friggin' sunny it is back there. It must be a yeah. perfect world. <laughs> this every, is paradise. You know, I got a black, car, a, a black truck. It's black now instead of gray. And it's just coated in pollen every day. It's just yellow. It's like, and I look around at everybody. Like, in fact, in the meeting, one of our <laughs> last, yesterday's meeting, uh, our uh, manager said, now don't forget, it's uh, turning into summer, so we have to wipe the windowsills every day. And what she meant was, pollen. So enjoy no, so, uh, But what would you no, say, Sal, for real? What, what yeah, kind of uh, conversion? Um, I, I, I agree. It's, uh, you know, everybody's different, and you just got to be – I like William's point. It's, it's a long term. Not everybody um, – you know, some will immediately like you. Some will – some may be or in a maybe and some will never ever like you so you got to just rest with that thought that hey not everyone's going to do it everyone's going to some people are going to come in and they're going to say oh i don't have the time and it's just you can't figure people out and whenever they're ready they're they're ready yeah. you know you can throw out a free offer a free class trial you could throw out a ten dollar trial you could throw out all these little things and they all work and they all don't work. Yep. So, yep. That's they it. Do. And I've, I've noticed that. So for example, I have, I think, uh, 25, 30,000 people from my town on my email list. Um, which is a lot of freaking people. Um, that doesn't mean that when I send out emails that I get lots of, uh, return emails. In fact, I get plenty of unsubscribes, which I used to be super scared of, but now I'm like, good, get off my email list. You know I mean? Room. Yeah. Um, but like, so for example, we have a $20, $20 for two weeks kickboxing trial. Um, when I discount it to $10, I say, Hey, 24 hours only 50% off 10 bucks. We lose money on the gloves, but we get a bunch of people in very, it's, it's a very low, uh, 
low rates of them even showing up, um, them coming to more than one class, and really low rates of them becoming a member. So like, like, he's, like Sal was saying, they're just not ready. Like they have to be ready. And when they're ready, they'll go for almost any offer because they need what you have. Um, the other thing that's really important on your website that's, that's definitely do it yourself, that's definitely like a DIY hack, um, is make sure that your messaging is congruent with what you're actually offering and what your, um, what your demographic needs. There are different, there are plenty of different parenting styles and you have to make sure that what you, what you do in your school is communicated on your website and it's talking to the right person. If you run a lot of discipline and structure in your class and your kids are hands of be together and it looks like a military class and everybody's punching together and the instructor is barking out orders, which there's nothing wrong with that. That should be communicated like via video on your website. And that's going to speak to certain parents who are like, Oh man, I remember when I was in, you know, whatever, like I yell a lot. And I just had, I did an intro yesterday and a kid goes, you're a lot nicer than my lacrosse coach. And the mom goes, and nicer than the hockey coach. And I thought, those must be some really mean dudes because I'm not, because I was like, hey, focus, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so like your messaging, what it is you're really trying to get across and what it is that you want those kids to do or those adults to do, um, you can't be all things to all people. I see it all the time. Like it's boom, boom, but especially with adults, it's you're going to lose weight and interact with people and we're going to teach you self-defense and this and this and this. Um, and it's really hard to communicate. Like you only have so certain, uh, like so much time um, on uh, on a website before their their dog pukes or they're bored or they click the X or whatever. So you have to make sure that the messaging is succinct. It's it's specific and it's here's what we have. Here's what it'll do for you. Here's what we want you to do next. Uh, one of the things that people track is what's called a bounce rate. Do people come on your website, read three sentences, and then pop right back off and go ah? right? Um, I remember there's a company here in town. Uh, I won't say their name, but they're a big, big media. They, they own a lot of um, billboards. And I got a really good drip marketing campaign from them. They sent me a book. Um, I can't remember what the book was, but it was in this nice little package. It had a bow on it. It was like delivered in a box from the mailman. And I opened it up. I'm like, what is this? And it was, it was, a, it was perfect marketing campaign to me as a business owner. Cause I called them and I was like, okay, let's talk. Right. Um, they had this whole program where you've got uh, billboards, but you also got a website and you also had this super nice video. Um, and they were amazed because the bounce rate was so low on our website. They were like, we've never seen bounce rates this low. People are staying on the website. And I was like, okay, well then where's the freaking results? I was like, you guys, then where's the results? No one has signed up from it yet. Um, and I actually stopped paying my contract and they didn't come after me for it because zero people signed up. One person called, we did a vanity number. One person called through the vanity number, zero people signed up through the website. And they, uh, they were like, okay, <laughs> you're right, right? Um, so it's just, it's hard to get people to convert. And uh, I think it's easier now because we have things like opt-ins, we have things like paid trials and online checkout forms and people are more accustomed to that. Um, you know, but you have to make sure that your messaging is succinct on the website, clear. And it, is that messaging also clear on your Facebook ad? Does your Facebook ad show a bunch of kids um, in hands and feet together, you know, yes, sir. And then on your website, uh, it shows a bunch of giggly four-year-olds and the instructor is swinging a, swinging a pool noodle at them because that's going to make a mom or a dad who wanted the other thing not sign up. You know, it can't be all things to all people. Um, that's a, that's a lot of information there. Is there, is there anything, somebody chatted and said a lot of people on the website slash Facebook, just searching around, not ready to commit. Um, uh, many are from out of town too far away. And that is, that is true. Well, it shouldn't, they shouldn't be out of town or too far away. If you've got your demographics right on Facebook. And the other issue with Facebook is it's, it's kind of disruptive media, right? Um, you might be advertising to the right target demographic but they might not be ready. They're in basketball season. They're in soccer season. Um, they opt in because they're like, Hey, Mr. Dave sounds like a nice guy. And uh, my kid did say he wanted to do, or she wanted to do martial arts. So, um, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt in here and then we'll sign up later. That's why you have to keep building relationships with them. So that mom is so convinced 
that you're the right place to be. Uh, you have that top of mind that, uh, that she goes there when her kid gets punched in the nose instead of somewhere else. She doesn't need to get on. I almost said the yellow pages. She doesn't need to open the phone book. She knows because she's got her email and she'll go back to her email and search Dave's martial arts and sign up through there. So do you recommend uh, people do their own copywriting or get a, a professional copywriter? If it's good, are you good at it? Um, and, and I, you know, you should be practicing your copywriting all the time um, through your emails. Uh, like I don't let anybody send an email out from uh, unless it's looked over by me. Uh, and in fact, my front desk girl getting paid 10 bucks an hour is better at writing emails than my manager. Now my manager is a better manager because she just doesn't take anything from anybody. And she's like, mm, like do it right. Her emails come across that way. Okay. Like she's going to be gone. And we're, when we're closing our security door and, and kids and kids have to come through the front door and it's like security door closed 10th through 23rd enter through front door. Do not exit through side door. Also exit through front door. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. Right. So like are, you have to get good at it and you have to also uh, get some feedback, right? Does this sound good? And you don't, can't necessarily get feedback from your target uh, market. That's a problem. People are always asking for feedback from, from their target market. And your target market doesn't really know what they want. Like um, you, the messaging or like the, the tone you can, you, you, you can uh, have, but like what does your target market want? They want it for free and they want it forever. Unless it says that, you're going to get pushback on, oh, well, I wouldn't. People will say, would you opt in for more information? And their answer is no, of course not. But that's not for martial arts because they don't need it yet. My wife will put, um, my wife will put items in her uh, bag online, in her checkout sh online, because she knows they're going to retarget her and they'll often retarget her with, with a discount. I do that too. Right, right. So like, not for martial arts, because you don't need, she, she doesn't need martial arts right now, you yeah. know, but so. Yeah, I just bought some window stickers and I, I just learned that because I just didn't have time to check out. Next day goes, you can save 25% uh, if you check out now. I go, I know what I'm doing from now on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, but so you have, you do have to be aware that when you're talking about Facebook ads, um, don't be so sad that they're not immediately taking action because you interrupted their day to tell them about martial arts. Anyway, they might be excited about it. They might think it's neat and you should judge, for example, your click through rates on Facebook and say, look, if your click through rate, is over one percent and your cost per click is under a dollar that means your messaging is pretty good for your demographics um but if you're like well i got a hundred clicks on facebook um and i only got 10 emails well you're doing great that's 10 percent if i i had a hundred people um click through on my facebook ad and, and i only got one email that's normal well what's the did you do a lot of uh direct mail with your schools Master Silva? I did in the past, yeah. Valpac. Yeah. And what kind of conversion rate would you expect from a, from a mailer? 1%, I'd be really happy. I mean, because I read back in the day that McDonald's gets like 4%. percent i go, well, McDonald's is more popular than me. If McDonald's only expects 4%, you know, if I got 1% or less than half a percent, I'm probably pretty happy. Because right. the, the value of the student, I could spend $500 on that, but if I got someone in they're going to pay me $5,000 over the next three years. Yeah, I did really good. So We're so spoiled. Everybody expects it to just be like, like right. You send out 5,000 direct mail flyers and 1% comes back. Um, what is that? Is that 50? Yeah. And that's, that's 50. A that's a lot. 50 calls. That's a lot. Really, we're talking about like 25. How many of them schedule? So now we just have 25 normal leads. How many of them schedule? How many of them come in? How many of them enroll? Um, and suddenly with Facebook, and I think it's on, it's because on Facebook, we can see the metrics where we never could before. And we're like, this is ridiculous. Nobody's coming in, you know? Um, but they are, I think the conversion rates are so Brandon Beliso and I, it, we're, we were talking in, in, uh, Vegas and he goes, what's, what is it with one or 2%? We expected the same thing with, is that just how all advertising works regardless of the medium? And I, we're, we're kind of like dumbfounded. Like, I guess, I guess it's just 1%, you know? So don't be so well, sad. If you do a promotional booth and you get to talk to people, you may make 
50 appointments and 45 people show up and 35 people, so you expect that type of results, but they made a human connection with you. And the only way to build trust with someone is really to one-on-one to be chest to chest or nose to nose to someone. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so uh, you know, like marketing pillars are certainly not only relying on Facebook ads. Hopefully, we're going out in the community um, because someone, a mom will, a mom will uh, deprioritize basketball if she meets Mr. Dave and sees the interaction, and she's like, "Oh, that's amazing." Okay, well, we'll sign up. Can you? Can we come just like one day a week until basketball is over? Yes. Whereas if she saw the Facebook ad, she'd be like, "I will. I, I'll just call them when basketball is over." Mm-hmm. You know. I, I think uh, I think the most effective is definitely face to face. I see that whenever we have these military housing events, I see that when we have these Costco events, I see that just in about everything that we do. I don't think nothing beats face to face because that's who you are, and they they can judge you whatever a million times, whatever the facial recognition is, and say I trust Dave or I trust William or I trust. Grandmaster Silva, you know, um, there, you can speak so many times louder than a Facebook ad or a peach jar, you know, um, and, and, uh, just as a feedback, you know, I've been sending these peach jar and it hasn't been working as it was last year. And I'm like, what's the difference, you know? And I'm like, and then yesterday, uh, two people, uh, paid in full in peach jar. Right. And so I'm like, you see, it's like really odd and it's really weird. And it's, you just, you know, you just got to put it out there and hopefully you pick a, you pick a winner, but uh, it's, it's just like just about everything. You, uh, you put out different traps or, you know, and you expect uh, the traps to come in. Yeah. Well, know? and, and, and uh, um, that's what people are looking at, at advertising uh, and they're asking ROI as if they're super, educated now well what's the ROI on that and it's like there isn't don't think of advertising in terms of what's my ROI think of advertising in terms of if you don't do it you're going to go out of business <laughs> it, it is an expense it's an it's you you pay your advertising like you pay your rent like I don't get anything from my landlord I don't get a pat on the back because I paid my rent you know um the 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 result is I get to stay in business same thing with advertising my last warning before we get off is that when you see people that are like, oh my God, my, my Facebook ads worked so well. I signed up with the XYZ company and they're killing it for me. Anybody can do that in the first 30 days or the first 60 days, the first 90 days with the Facebook ad. They change the strategy, they change the demographics, they put in their secret sauce and boom, it is not consistent and it's not sustainable, right? I was getting $1 opt-ins and $5 trials on my parkour program when we first started advertising it in, this, in January. It's not still happening. Now it's like a $60 conversion to a, to a free trial. I'm still happy because if I put 10 of those in there, I'm going to sign up five of those students. But you see what I'm saying? Um, and then uh, additionally, not once have I ever heard someone brag about 100 paid trials this month. Oh, XYZ company is getting you 100 paid trials this month. Every single time I dig a little deeper, I ask that person, okay, neat. That's cool. How many, uh, so 100 paid trials a month. How many students do you have in your school? They always, like my, uh, my uh, maintenance guy says, they always him and haw. They always him and haw. Because if you're getting 100 pay trials a month and you don't have 1,500 students in your school, there's a problem, mm-hmm. right? Those are bad trials or you're not really getting the money or they're not coming in. So, like, don't brag that my, uh, that my Ferrari is in, the, is in the garage and take a bunch of pictures of it when really it has no engine and there was a, there's a dead body in the trunk and that's how you got it. You know what I mean? So that's my, that's my final warning. I asked for a few things. I get a whole page of notes. You gave, us, right. you gave us a lot more than a few. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Everyone have a great day. I, I recorded this. I'm going to post this. All right. Thank you.